In this video I'm going to talk to you about the materials you need and a few techniques that you'll be using as we proceed to the Module 10 assignment. You're going to need some Prismacolor pencils. We're going to use the black and the white exclusively for this project because we're using a toned paper. We're also going to use a regular pencil and a kneaded rubber eraser. You want to play with your kneaded rubber eraser to make it malleable, like you would if this were Silly Putty. The proper way to use a kneaded rubber eraser is to try to lift the pencil off the paper. That uh, really creates the least amount of damage to the paper surface. So rather than rubbing it, you want to lift any pencil marks. Using the right side of the paper. This is the correct side, the least textured side. And this is the wrong side, the side with more texture. Applying tone. I'm using the right side of the paper right now for the first demo. And I just want to show you that you should start out with a light touch, a light application of the white, so that you're building up a light tonal value on the medium toned paper that you have. So think of it as you're gradually increasing the lightness of your paper by drawing lightly with the white pencil and gradually increasing the tonal value to pure white when needed. Think back of all of the other exercises that you've done in this class and you have been taught that seeing is one of the most important skills that an artist can, can use when they're drawing. So I want you to see the nuances of value in the, um, the still life that, that you'll be creating for this assignment. Everything in your still life is white, but as you shine a light on your still life or sit near a window, you'll be seeing shadows and a variety of values in this object made all of white. So the whites that are going to be drawn in your um, drawing should be what is the whitest area. Remember that the middle value is going to be represented by the color of the paper. Now I'm going to show you what happens with the white when you're drawing on the wrong side of the paper, or actually would be just any color on the wrong side of the paper, but it creates um, a waffle type of texture because this side of the paper is very pebbly and colored pencils are very soft. So when you're drawing with them on this textured paper, the texture picks up immediately and you should be able to see it in the video. You can test your paper out if you want to, if you're having a hard time visually seeing, because it is subtle. It shows up a lot more when you start drawing on it. So when you don't have any drawing on it, it's a pretty subtle texture difference. So you can take a corner of your paper and you can do some drawing on it to determine which side is a textured side if you can't see it yourself just by looking at it. So um, I think it's pretty obvious here that you can see one uh, of the white triangles is much has much less texture than the other. So now let's work with the black pencil and we're doing the same thing here. Even if you see something in your still life that's very very black you don't want to just go in there and color it in black right away because um, it's very very difficult to erase Prismacolor pencil. In fact you never can really erase it fully. So any kind of value whether it's a light value or a dark value you want to build it up gradually um, because you want to be really looking at your uh, subject matter and you want to determine the values by analyzing one tone next to another and not just making assumptions right away that something is, um, is really black. You want to give yourself room to make judgments all the way through your drawing. So you're going to be gradually building the tone. And you're always going to keep the black and white separate. You're never going to cross them over. And later in this video you'll see an example of why you don't want to do that. So uh, we're going to start working with just exclusively the white pencil and then we'll be working with the black pencil. But for right now I want you to think about how you can achieve a variety of blacks or grays by just applying black on top of this mid-tone paper and the more pressure you use on your pencil or the more you overlay, um, you're going to get a denser black.
the same way you would get a denser white. So here now we're going to demo on the, t on the paper that has, or I'm sorry, the wrong side of the paper, a lot more texture on this side, and you're going to see that waffle texture again start to appear. So uh, just be aware of that, and before you start your drawing, because you're going to be putting a few hours into this drawing, you want to make sure that you are using the correct side of the paper. I do have a finished drawing to show you a little bit later in this video where um, the wrong side of the paper was used. The drawing is still very nice, but you're going to see that the texture kind of interferes with the look of the drawing. It's not as smooth, not as convincing. Um, we're really trying to achieve a three-dimensional quality here, and we don't really need that texture to be showing through the Prismacolor work. So hopefully you see the difference between the right side of the paper and the wrong side of the paper. Now I'm lifting or trying to lift Prismacolor and you can barely see a difference on the white part. Nothing really is happening in the dense area of the white and very little is coming up off of the thinner areas of white. So again that's just to show you that um, don't expect to be able to erase mistakes, you really can't. And it's even harder on the black. You probably won't see any difference with my trying to lift on the black side. I'm also going to show you um, a way not to erase. And that is um, sometimes when you erase with another kind of eraser, you might be doing a um, back and forth motion, kind of like a scrubbing motion. That's not really good for this kind of paper. So that scrubbing motion um, is just bad for the paper. It abrades the surface. Here's the drawing on the wrong side of the paper. Nice drawing, but you can see all that texture. And here's one that's done on the right side of the paper, and you can see it's much more effective in its 3D qualities. All right, now what not to do. Here is the uh, segment of drawing the white and the black on top of each other. In this demonstration, I'm starting with the black, but it wouldn't matter. You could start with the white. Um, it would be the same result. So um, I'm creating just this little circular shape, making half of it more dense than the other half. So one side is more gray looking, the other side will be a little bit darker. And then I'll go over what I've drawn with a white pencil, and you're gonna see that it makes a gray that's not at all compatible with the kind of drawing we're doing. It's, uh, it's never a good idea to do that. You, when you use paint, you think of just mixing black and white and you get a gray and that's fine. But in colored pencil work, uh, you're better off buying gray pencils. So um, it just doesn't make a very attractive looking color at all. So after this, um, you can start to think about beginning your drawing and there's another video that will show you um, kind of a fast forward of, of um, creating that drawing from the still life.